Hi, welcome to The Child's View. Today we're gonna talk about the um, early math for higher education project and we have a guest uh, here today to talk about that. Her name is Angela and we are so happy to have us with us today. So Angela, tell us about the project and... Thanks so much for having me. Hi, Hi. my name is Angela Chan Taro. I'm a senior researcher and teacher educator at UCLA. Um, I'm part of the DREAM Network, the Development and Research in Early Math Education. So this is a network of teacher educators and researchers across a number of universities who really care about early math um, and creating a field of early math education. One of the major resources um, as part of this project has been the DREAM Teacher Educator website. This website has a variety of materials that folks can use to engage early childhood educators in mathematics um, across a range of content, um, counting, patterns, algebra, measurement. Um, a lot of the resources tap into other areas that folks might be really interested in, like connecting to literacy and picture books, um, connecting home and school mathematics, um, ideas for how to engage dual language learners, um, lots and lots of ideas of children's thinking and how to listen to children's thinking and respond in ways that are intentional yet playful. So our Early Math in Higher Education project has uh, invited teacher educators from across the state of California over the past two years. Um, Bernadette and Becky um, are two of our wonderful participants who are part of our first cohort, uh, which began in fall of 2019 in the Central Valley area. Since then, we have expanded to um, um, teacher educators across over, I think, over 40 institutions, oh, over 60 institutions um, across the state of California. Um, so the Southern California area, the Northern California area, and the Central Valley area still. Um, so it's just been really exciting to have um, this growing network of folks who teach in early childhood and child development programs across two-year and four-year um, colleges who are all interested in thinking about how to deepen their own ideas of early math and how to infuse ideas of early math or um, kind of enrich their teaching of early math to prospective and practicing preschool teachers. Um, it's been really lovely really seeing the collaborations um, and um, the ways in which folks are taking up these ideas across their coursework um, and having an impact on the students that they teach. Uh, Angela, I, I just have to say that when we first did the first cohort, I didn't realize how much I did not think about math mm -hmm. <laughs> for yeah. early ch for early childhood. You know, you think about, you know, the plain things like sorting and patterning, but you know, Really, the, the things that you did with us in the workshop as far as looking at books and, mm -hmm. and the pages and talking about spatial relationship and things like that, uh, I, I just think that that's phenomenal. The work that you're doing is phenomenal. The resources that the Dream website has, and we, we will give you the link for that, is phenomenal. It just has so many wonderful resources for teachers that are going to be teaching young children. Right. Math. Well, and they have examples. So many videos. Yeah. You know, I can, um, in fact, one of my curriculum classes, we have lesson plans and they have to do a math mm -hmm. lesson plan. And so I provide the resources there. And, and it, again, it's that realization that, oh my gosh, you know, when this little boy was, you know, putting his, you know, cars behind each other, look at the patterns he was creating. It right. was something I could have completely miss and often we do yeah. but you know <clears throat> having that you know resource talking about it and then watching that video and going right. I've seen that but I had, didn't do anything with it and now I can I mean I need to pay attention right to that and all of you know and the one of the main messages for the program is that math is everywhere mm -hmm. yeah. and we miss it and we need to pay more attention to it whether yeah. it's more books attention. or in their play or on our walks or right. in our yeah. conversations our vocabulary so yeah, it was a great, great opportunity. Uh, what's been really exciting about this is getting folks like you together, Becky, right? And we <laughs> had the opportunity to have, to have a couple of days really deeply engaged in this material together. Um, but the, the resources are designed to be used really flexibly. And so to hear how you took up 
the videos into your courses and how you've engaged with them and you know, kind of how you're um, able to engage your students in them. And then our follow-up sessions where you get to share about that with other um, teacher educators has, I think, been a really powerful piece of the model that you just have this ongoing practice and you get to share these stories and share how math is everywhere has, you know, been important for you and you get to keep building that relationship with others within the network. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday they had a follow-up session and in that session one of the ladies said that what she does in her class now is she asks them because most of the time they all say they hate math, right? Yeah. right? And so she says, okay, what I want you to think about is when was the first time you started hating math? Well, can oh. you think back and what was that moment that you realized or said to yourself, I can't do this or I hate math? what what right. was you know about that and i thought that that was such a good strategy to yes. help teachers get in touch with you know what made math seem so right. taboo or yeah, yeah for them or negative yeah i think for me it was when they told me that x equaled a number when i knew x was a letter no. <laughs> so right. i was right i don't understand yeah. and so from that instant on getting yeah. into the algebra part of it i it just right. I, I hated it. Well, and I don't know whether it's a gender <laughs> issue, but I remember feeling like I just couldn't do it. This is mm. your weak point, and it is always, I guess I always knew that or thought that, mm. and then in high school it was compounded by instructors that just kind of let me believe that, and so it's just yep. a matter of getting by. And not, mm. not first, not that it's everywhere and let's get excited about it, right. but second of all, not talking about where you're going to continue to use it, which you are. So right. I couldn't make sense of why I had to be there. Mm -hmm, and it right. was such a struggle. So yeah, I have a lot of negative experiences with math. And I love the fact that this makes us relook at that. Um, well, and it we, has to start early. Yeah, mm -hmm. if we start that love mm -hmm. early or that oh, that gosh. knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, that the, the depth and breadth of what right. we mm -hmm. teach as opposed to, you know, teaching this much this big we try to teach this, this much, much but this, this big. deep oh. and you know we need to reverse that and if yeah. we start mm -hmm. by showing children at a young age that every single place you look there's something that is mathematically related right mm. shapes or like you said spatial mm -hmm. awareness mm -hmm. and right and i in my observation and assessment class one of the things that the students do is they have to they use one of the tools to track the use of centers mm. math and science least used 100% of the time that's the answer wow. and so my next question is what can you do what right. do you do in this area what are you doing during story time what are you doing wow. throughout the day that changes the children's view of that first of all are you changing your own view right you know what have you done to make this exciting and to draw children in so, yeah right yeah angela when you first started the project did you take a poll and ask you know or find out how many people just didn't didn't like math or <laughs> didn't want to do math or did you do any oh. research like that at the beginning that's a great question. You know, as we invited participants in and got to know them a little bit, I, we had a big range of stories um, of their own identities and their own personal experiences with math. I think some came in really loving it and really wanting to, loving engaging children around it, right? And really wanting to continue on with um, within a community that, that would support that. But others, I think, had stories like you all are sharing where they did not see themselves as math people. They saw that math um, would, was a was a weak. They considered it as, as a weak area, and mm -hmm. they wanted to seek out a professional learning experience to boost their own, you know, experiences with math. And I think these stories that you all are sharing um, along gender lines, there's there's a lot of equity issues around who right. has exactly. who feels like they have access to math that's really structured by mm -hmm. what math looks like in school. And so I think I'm, you know, what what's so powerful about the material materials that we have and for me this lens of really listening to children and letting children's ideas you know like you're saying in centers what are you doing in centers um, how are you here you know how are you supporting kids ideas but really how are you listening and building on their ideas and inviting them in for me that's a really powerful entry point for um, any child in your classroom to feel like oh my goodness my idea matters and you're telling me that my idea is mathematical 
And、um, my hope is that, right, that is something that we can keep continue. We can continue to cultivate in children. So a number of Um, um, relationships to math have come into our program in general, right? As folks are, you know, completing our surveys and engaging with us, they talk about how their own identities shift. And like you all are saying, they see how math is so accessible and so relevant to so many aspects of lives, their own lives. And so we hope that they're instilling that in their students as well. Awesome. Well, thank you, Angela, for coming and talking to us about this very important project. We really appreciate it, and I、uh, just want to、uh, thank everybody for、uh, watching the Child's View. Don't forget to subscribe, and we are on Instagram. So,、uh, thank you for joining us.